Hey guys, just bear with me for a second. I'm just going to get my phone set up so that I can uh, follow along and keep up with everybody. Um, just going to turn this down. Okay. I'm so sorry that I'm a bit late tonight. Um, I think I said around 8, but I've been a bit all over the place this week, so I apologise. Um, I really wanted to jump on at some point, though, because there were three stories that really troubled me. Um, over the last sort of week and they were published on Cauldron Pool and I just thought I would go through them briefly um, with you. I don't know if everybody's aware of these things and if they are or they're not, um, they everybody should be because it's something I think that is only going to get worse with time. It's something that I think is getting worse each week I sort of log on and see things. So I'll start off with the first story and I'm pretty sure it got a lot of um, uh, sort of internet outrage from majority of parents. So um, Cuties on Netflix. Um, I Yeah, I'm going to attach these three articles in the comments at the end of the live so that everybody can read them and get familiar with what they look like. Um, so Anyway, the first story is Cuties that came out on Netflix. So it was just a preview, but I'm just going to read some of the article so that if you don't know what it is, you can be made aware of it. Um, so here we go. Netflix. The story follows a journey of a young girl named Amy who, in defiance of her family's conservative beliefs, uh, starts to explore her femininity. And she explores it through twerking. Now, when you read the word twerking, um, think of Miley Cyrus, because uh, that's basically what it is. And this is an 11 year old girl. So <laughs> the dictionary, which is an article, even defines it as a sexually suggestive dance characterized by rapid, repeated hip thrusts and shaking of the buttocks, especially while squatting. Now let's continue. I'm going to keep going back to this because this is an 11 year old girl, 11. So this is what this whole series is based on. So there was promotional artwork that was released with a trailer. And if you have a look at the promotional artwork, which is of this 11 year old girl with all of her friends around her. So it's not just one 11 year old girl. There's lots of young women who are sexualized, who are, um, sort of flaunting themselves around on this promotional poster. So as I said, I'm going to attach the article. Please have a look at it um, and you will just see how shocking these images are. So um, if we keep going, um, it says here, there was a petition that was um, sort of uh, started online and it's got lots of signatures heaps of them, um, jump on and do your best to um, do what you can to help. And um, yeah, we'll uh, hopefully be able to put a stop to this being advertised and by coming out. So Netflix released a statement after all of this, which says, we're deeply sorry for the inappropriate artwork that we used for cuties. It was not okay, nor was it representative of this French film, which won an award at Sundance. Um, we've now updated the pictures and the description. So basically the way that I'm reading this is that um, they've sort of backpedaled, they haven't got rid of it, it's still coming out, but they've just changed the description and they've changed, um, I guess, the, the promotional sort of um, artworks and things like that. Regardless of whether they've changed the artwork, regardless of the description, um, I think it's pretty clear that the film itself is highly inappropriate and who in their right mind, what sort of alternate universe do you have to live in to think it's okay to even create such a film? I'm going to move on to the second thing now. So um, there's a TV series on Disney called um, the Owl House. Now, when I posted this story on my page, I had lots of parents say, oh no, my kids loved this show and they were really disappointed that um, it, this whole 
uh, new agenda had been introduced. Now, what's that agenda, you might ask? Well, Disney have now, with this series, introduced a bisexual child as the lead character where this girl hangs out with witches in hell. So, <laughs> I mean, again, what sort of um, person has to even come up with these ideas? That's come from someone's mind. So, okay, I'm going to read some of the article again so that you can follow along. The story follows a 14-year-old. So, in some countries, at 14, it's actually still um, illegal to be intimate. Um, some countries is 16, some is 18, uh, you know, anyway. So, this is a 14-year-old girl who is... <laughs> bisexual she is dominican american girl and she intends on becoming a witch after stumbling upon a portal to the to the demon realm the demon realm where she befriends a rebellious witch okay so the person who created this series um actually said on twitter that during the development of this story very early on she was very open about her intention to put queer kids in the main cast. This is what she has said. I'll read it. I'm a horrible liar, so sneaking it in would have been hard. When we were greenlit, I was told by certain Disney leadership that I could not represent any form of bi or gay relationship on the channel. And then she said this, I'm bi. I want to write a bi character. Luckily, my stubbornness paid off, and now I am very supported by current Disney leadership. Well done. So, as I said, you've got cuties, which is 11-year-old girls who are twerking, who are doing the whole Miley Cyrus dance thing, who are, and the whole story is about that, um, 11-year-old uh, rebelling against her um, conservative family. Like, even that in itself, portraying rebellion against family as a positive thing is just disgusting on its own, let alone the twerking. And now you've got this one, which is about a bisexual girl who is 14, who gets taken into a portal to the demon realm, who befriends a rebellious witch, and now she wants to be a witch. Come on. So I will move on now to the third show. And I think, to be honest, this next one is probably even worse than all of them. And you're probably thinking, how? But let me explain how. So this one is called Big Mouth. Now, this one here is got child pornography throughout it. It pushes pedophilia. And uh, if you read the article, and you go through all of the photographs, the screenshots and everything, you'll understand why. So I'm going to read some of the article. Um, let me go here. The show has been described. It's a delightfully vulgar exploration of puberty. The series follows a group of children navigating their way through puberty, masturbation and sexual arousal. Okay, one of the characters is a 13-year-old girl named Missy. And apparently it's the modern day answer to Lisa Simpson, the Simpsons character. So Vanity Fair have described the show and the main character as this. And I'm going to read it because it will help you understand just how depraved and how rude this show is. She's an innocent little nerd who's breathless, High-pitched voice bellies the hormonal preteen within. Her budding sexuality outpaces her physical development. She's frequently masturbating this season, even though she still has the body of a child. Missy masturbates with her favourite child toy, a stuffed worm. In an act her family calls worm dancing. How lovely that the family, obviously, in the show comment on this said child masturbating. Lovely. In one episode, two of the young characters are taken into a nude women's spa. 
where they are seduced by a female demon. Here's a demon again. There's a theme going on. Until they eventually take off their clothes and begin dancing with other um, with other naked adults. Like, <laughs> anyway. So, I'm going to digress from that. If you go through the article, you can see um, some of the images. Um, I'm not going to explain what they are because I don't really want to, but sort of what I went through before, you can see, I think with pixelate, even though they're cartoons, we've still censored them because to be honest, nobody wants to see that and nobody should see that. Even in depiction of cartoons. So that's the show. So you've got cuties on Netflix. You've got the, um, what's it called? The Owl House on Disney. And you've also got on Netflix, Big Mouth. Now that's just three. I could name off the top of my head another 10 that have similar types of um, adult and um, I, I don't think child-friendly material. Now, um, the three that I chose are probably the three more recent, the more ones that would be fresh in the media and fresh in your mind. So you can read the articles that are attached in the story here. Please do that. Um, jump online, have a good look at it. I guess the point that I really wanted to jump on and say um, is that the entertainment industry has shifted so much. No matter what you watch, no matter um, what entertainment you, you're viewing, there's always an underlying message. There's always something that the author wants the audience to um, get at the end of watching it. So if you look at Disney back when I was growing up in the 80s and the 90s, sure, there were things back then that my parents didn't even want me to watch. Lots of, you know, like witchcraft things. I remember my parents said no to that. However, um, back then, I feel like if you were to put on a cartoon that was child rated, um, you could almost have like a sense of comfortability in that, knowing that there's not, not going to be something too bad. Um, and I guess the messages back then were about friendship and loyalty and um, being a hero and saving the day and helping. That was sort of the messages that were sort of Put into films back then but now you've almost got two different worldviews you've got the worldview of majority of parents and how parents want to raise their children and you've got the worldview of the entertainment industry and basically what the entertainment industry is doing now is saying parents at home are failing to teach their kids the worldview that we think they should be taught so we're going to use films and entertainment and books and stories to re-educate the children how the entertainment industry's worldview sees fit. And I think it needs to be a huge wake up to parents. You need to really see what they're doing. Um, you've got, I think the two biggest things that are going to shoot parents in the foot is apathy and laziness because, you know, <laughs> I think what when we could once turn on the TV, we could flick on the child ABC kids on TV and walk away for an amount of hours and just know that the kids, there's going to be cartoons on, they're going to be entertained, it's going to be okay. It's now sort of shifted to um, having to really put things through a sieve and watch it and view it and make sure that um, what our kids are watching is acceptable to our worldview, not the entertainment industry's worldview. And yeah, as I said, apathy, laziness are going to be the biggest problem for parents because, yeah, I think, you know, like we all fall victim to tiredness, to doing things that makes makes life easier. And turning on the TV is something that even my parents did for me when I was a child. Um, but I think it's really important now that we understand the difference between the majority worldview and the entertainment's worldview. And I think that we need to really um, decide whether we accept the entertainment industry worldview. And if we don't accept it, we need to up our game. We need to make sure we can't, I don't even think it's okay to sit next to 
children and watch something and see what happens because you blink your eye you go to the bathroom you go get a glass of water who knows what can happen even Disney's Onward film it's a great film but there's one part in it where they have brought in a lesbian character um, the police officer and that's only like a really small snippet in that film but if you get up in that moment and walk to get a glass of water and your child's sitting there you might not even know it's there it's done the damage is done now I'm not saying you know you've got to decide what your worldview is that's my point and you need to be vigilant and you need to protect the little ones because the entertainment industry's worldview is so different to what it used to be and it's dangerous it's destructive I think it all comes down to normalizing behavior and to desensitize things. If you look at most things in the world, um, if you look at it 30 years ago to now, you how did we get here? How did it go from this to this? And you've got to look at um, how it slipped in. And I think the biggest thing that has happened is, um, is uh, desensitizing. And I think that um, I think that when you desensitize language and you desensitize ideas, it becomes easier to normalize it. And if you look at all of the um, uh, sort of um, words that we use now to what we use back then, I mean, it used to be called um, you know adultery, and now it's an affair. It used to be called um, you know, certain things, and you can see the through the use of words and the use of language, we're desensitizing and almost taking away the shock factor of things. Um, whereas, uh, yeah, and you can see it in movies as well, how it's over time, things are getting slipped in through the cracks. We're getting apathetic, we're getting lazy, complacent, and we're forgetting to really watch what we're doing. Um, and I think that I just wanted to jump on and say that now is the time more than ever to pull our fingers out and be really careful um, with what we're allowing our kids to watch, what we even allow ourselves to watch. Because some of these shows I mentioned are for adults. They're, they're, they're not even child rating. They're, they're depicting children doing sexual things for adult entertainment that's not right. That's not normal. And um, yeah, I think that as a society, we have not progressed with these ideas. We have regressed. And we need to recognize that the whole progressive agenda is not progressive. It's regressive. You look at all the problems that our youth are faced with today. They outweigh exponentially the problems that our generations had when we were kids and you've got to ask yourself why why is there such a difference and the reason is we're allowing too many things our worldviews are shifting and we really need to start tightening everything up watch things before your kids watch them and don't let them just sit there and be apathetic to it as hard as it is you know the days are long but the years are short, so if we put in the hard work now, it will pay off later. Now, I think I've um, spoken uh, a lot about this. I think I'm going to wrap it up. I'm just going to quickly have a look and see whether there's been any um, sort of comments or anything. Actually, I did want to address one thing. I did want to just address one thing, sorry. Um, in 2008... There was an Australian man who was convicted of possessing child porn. He was fined $3,000 and he had to enter a two-year good behaviour bond um, in relation to every single child-related offence. Now, the porn content in this man's possession comprised of a series of cartoons depicting underage characters from The Simpsons in engaging sexual acts. Now let's fast forward a decade. So that was a 2008 and we're now in 2020, just a decade. How are these shows that I've mentioned any different from what this man was 
um, convicted of child pornography for. He had Simpsons cartoons doing sexual things. And these shows that I've mentioned, these three shows are all of children doing sexual things. Look at the Shira. I, like, that was like such a great show. He-Man, Shira. It's all about transgender leads now. Um, I could, anyway, the list could go on about all of these cartoons for kids with all these ideas. And there's a man who on his record is convicted of child porn for something that Netflix and Disney are just putting in their everyday shows. So anyway, please check the comments, read the articles that I've attached, um, familiarize yourself with the shows that are out there um, that have this sort of material in it because it's everywhere. As I said, it's everywhere. You can't just turn on Disney, ABC Kids, Netflix, Stan. You can't do that. You have to be vigilant. So please familiarize yourself with the shows that I've mentioned. Research it. If there are any other shows that I that you're aware of that I'm not, please send them through to me so I can research them and I can bring it to everybody's attention. That would be fantastic. And I'm going to leave it at that. I've probably spoken too much. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, it's a bit of a horrible subject, but it has to be said. Anyway, I hope you all have a fantastic night and I'll see you guys next week.